Shalom. <clears throat> First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah Bahasham Rakak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, and a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful let I get out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. So he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations. They may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line goes back to you being the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, one of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Inshallah, Mom. It's your brother Halaki from the GMS Denver camp coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shah with another video. And this time I just wanted to go into some prophecy. Of what's about to take place with us, man. Lord willing, we be a we be a part of that number to make it on the first go round. So what's about to happen with us, man? We're about to come into a another way of being, another way, you see, of of life, a true way of life, you see. And this change, this metamorphosis, this transformation that we're about to undergo is going to be made possible through our Lord Yahweh Shah. You see, Yahweh Shah is who. Is going to cleanse us. You see? So for all you uh, brothers and sisters who might just be waking up to this truth, don't listen to these guys who are telling you that Yahweh Shah is not important. Don't be listening to these guys who are telling you that Yahweh Shah sacrifice, it doesn't matter. Don't listen to these guys that's telling you that we're going to be saved by the law. No. We're going to be saved and cleansed through our faith in our Lord Yahweh Shah. That's what the Most High set up for it to be. You see, that this is how the Most High set it up for us Israelites to return back unto him, man. Through faith in the Lord, Yahweh Shah. You see, so I want to go into some prophecy about what the Most High through Yahweh Shah is going to do. So we're going to start right here in Ezekiel 35. And it just breaks it down for us. Let's read it. Ezekiel, it's like Ezekiel 36 and 16. It's a lot here. It says, Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it by their own way and by their doings. Their way was before me as an un the uncleanness of a removed woman. You see, because the reason we're not, we're not in our land right now, the reason we've been cast down and put up under the foot of the heathen is because of our disobedience, man. It's because of our unwillingness to walk in the way of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. You see, because the Most High gave us Law, statutes, and commandments that we're supposed to uh, uh, live by. You see? But we couldn't do it because of the flesh. So we defiled ourselves, man. We walked in a way that was not pleasing unto the Most High. And he tells us that we, we became as what? A, uh, we became unclean like a removed woman. Talking about a woman on her period, man. Because a woman is very unclean during that time of the month. You see? Now, verse 18 says, What? Well, for I poured my fury upon them for the blood that, that they had shed upon the land, and for the idols wherewith they had polluted it. You see that? Our people was committing murder, you see, defrauding one another, committing adultery with each other's wives, worshiping idols, doing all manner of madness in our land, man. And that's why the Most High poured the fury upon us. This is why we suffer what we suffered. You see, as Israelites, man, because of our, 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 our disobedience and transgression toward the Most High. Now, what was the thing, one of the things the Most High did unto us for a punishment? Verse 19 tells us, it says what? And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through all through the countries. According to their way, according to their doings, I judged them. You see that? So one of the punishments was, was what? us to be scattered all throughout the world amongst all the heathen nations you see and we, and, we, and we were scattered amongst these heathen nations generation after generation after generation after generation you see until we completely fell away from the understanding of who we were the understanding of who the heavenly father Yahweh is and from the understanding of who our lord and savior is man we fell away from all that, from from all of that, 
because we're living amongst the heathens for so long that we we uh started to keep their ways, man. We started to live as them. That was a part of our punishment. You see? Because it tells us in what, Jeremiah? Oh, what is it? Uh Jeremiah 17 and 4 says what? And thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever. You hear that? This is the most I was speaking to the prophet Jeremiah. As Israelites, man, we all fell away. You see? From who we truly are. When we fell away from the one true living power, the God that we're supposed to serve is Israelites, man. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The most I took all of that away from us, man. And as we grew up amongst these heathen, generation after generation, we got worse and worse and worse. You see? Now it goes on to say, verse 19, And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through through the countries, meaning what Israel, the, the Israelites are scattered all throughout the world, still to this day. And this is why we tell you that we're not black Hebrew Israelites, man, because you're going to have our brothers and sisters coming back from all the nations that we have been scattered to, looking like all the nations that they have been scattered amongst. Why? It's because you have the men of our nation who are sleeping with the, 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 the heathen women and bringing forth Israelites from those heathen women. And they're, and they're going to have some of the facial features and characteristics of those heathen women that our, our men are laying with. So that's why we tell you that this is not this is not about skin color, man. We're not black Hebrew Israelites. We're just Hebrew Israelites, man. You see? So we were scattered all throughout the world, through all hey, every country. In every country in the world, there's Israelites there, man. You see? Now verse 20 says what? And when they entered in unto the heathen, whether they went, they profaned my holy name. And how did we do that? By living according to the ways of the heathen. That's how we profane the Most High's name, man. By calling upon false idols, by worshiping false idols, man. By keeping the customs of false idols. That's how we profane the Most High's name as Israelites. It says what? When they said to them, these are the people of Yahweh and are gone forth out of his land. Verse 21 says what? But I have had, but I had pity for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, whether they went. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for mine holy name's sake, which ye have profaned among the heathen, whether you went. You see that? So even though we've we've done all manner of madness before the before Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, you see, he is going to come and save us. He is going to come and sanctify himself in us. He's a, he's already sanctifying us by giving us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, by giving us the faith to believe in Yahweh Shah. It's already beginning. You see? Verse 23 says what? And I will sanctify my great name which was profaned among the heathen, which he had profaned in the midst of them, and the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, saith the Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. And this is what's taking place right now, because what are we doing as Israelites? Let's let's say it like this. What what is the remnant doing? The remnant is uplifting and exalting the heavenly father Yahweh and his only begotten son Yahweh Shah. You see? We're walking in a different way. Then we walk before we came into this truth. We're walking according to what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah has told us to do. This causes our Father to be sanctified, and this causes us to be sanctified, man. Meaning what? Set apart, being holy, as the Most High has intended us to always be. We are His holy people according to what? Deuteronomy 76, Deuteronomy 14 and 2, so forth and so on, man. And the Most High is returning us back unto that. How? 
through the Lord Yahweh Shah. This is how we're being sanctified. This is how we're being made holy. Through faith in the Lord, man. Now listen. It says what? Verse 24 says, For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. Now, do you hear that? You see? Now, is this talking about the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, getting up off of his throne and, and, and accomplishing this prophecy? No. He's going to send his only begotten son to do it. This is why this is why Yahweh Shah is very important, man, because he fulfills all these prophecies. This is why Yahweh Shah said what? For Lord, I come in the volume of the book, it is written to me, to do thy will, O Yahweh. This is the most high's will to, for, for what? For the Israelites to be saved from all the lands we have been scattered to. And how is that prophecy going to be uh, fulfilled and brought to pass? Through the Lord Yahweh Shah, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Now let's get this one real quick. Let's get it, uh, Isaiah 11. We'll start at 10. Isaiah 11 and 10 says what? Now listen to this. And in that day there shall be a root of Jesse. Which shall stand for an ensign of the people. That root of Jesse is talking about who? The Lord Yahweh Shah. Because who is Jesse? Jesse is the father of King David. Now doesn't the prophecy tell you that the out of King David's loins shall the Messiah come? You see, the one that's going to sit upon the throne forever? So that's who the ensign is, man. Yahweh Shah is that ensign from the root of Jesse. Through our forefather King David. Now it says what? Which shall stand for an ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek. You hear that? Now, are these, the Gentiles being spoken of right here, is it talking about all people? No. The Gentiles who are, that's spoken of right here is talking about us coming up out of that Gentile state of mind and seeking unto Yahweh Shah. You see? Seeking unto our Lord and our Savior, man. We are the Gentiles that is being, a hey, being bought back through grace and mercy through the Lord Yahweh Shah. And what does it say? And his rest shall be glorious. You see that? The rest, rest ain't promised to all nations. The rest is only promised to the most highest people, man. Let's get that real quick. Then we'll come back to this. It says what? There should there remain there uh, remain of a rest, right? Yup. Hebrews. Four. Listen, Hebrews four and eight it says what? For if Yahweh Shah had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day? Now this this Yahweh Shah that's been spoken of right here is talking about our forefather jo uh, Joshua when he took us into the promised land. You see, him and our Lord and Savior have the same name because that was a foreshadowing a foreshadowing. Of what the ultimate savior was going to do when he returned. We're going to get that. We're going to get that rest through the ultimate savior, which is Yahweh Shah, the only begotten Son of the Most High. Then it tells you in verse nine that what there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of the Most High. You hear that? So those Gentiles who are seeking after that ensign, who are going to enter into his rest, are the people of the Most High. Now, are all people the people of the Most High? No. The only people that belong to the Heavenly Father is who. Let's get it. Exodus. Three. And ten. It says what? Come now therefore. And I will send thee to Pharaoh, unto Pharaoh. That thou mayest bring forth my people. My people. My people. The children of Israel out of Egypt. Do you hear that? So the only people that belong unto the heavenly father are the Israelites. That's who the rest is coming to. The, hey, those Gentiles that you're reading about are the people of the Most High, the Israelites who have been scattered all throughout the world. Why? Because of their disobedience, because of their transgressions. Their punishment is coming to an end, and we're waiting for our Lord Yahweh Shah to come and save us, as promised, as prophesied, right? You see? Uh, what's the other one? Let's get this one right here as well. Deuteronomy 32. In 8, it says what? When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, 
He set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. For Yahweh's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. So the Israelites belong to the Heavenly Father. That's who that rest is coming to. Those Gentiles that are seeking after that ensign are Israelites. You see, and it says what? And his rest shall be glorious. Why? Because the rest is promised and ordained for the people of the Lord, which are who? The Hebrew Israelites, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see that? Now it goes on to say, verse 11, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left from, hold up, Isaiah 11 and 11, And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. Okay. We just read we just read in Exodus 3 and 10. That was the first time the most I redeemed his people. He saved his people, recovered his people. Was from what? From Egypt. What's about to take place here in this time is the second Exodus, which is going to be filled, fulfilled through our Lord Yahweh Shah. You see? He's gonna, but this time he's coming to save what? A remnant. Of Israel, all of Israel won't be saved this time, man. Only a, a small number, of the one third, is going to be saved this time. And where is that one third going to come from? It says what? That the Lord shall set His hand again the second time to recover the remnant of His people, which shall be left from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathos, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea. You hear it? These are all different lands that the Most High scattered us to, man. The Most High scattered his chosen people, his heritage, his inheritance amongst all the heathen nations. And those Israelites who believe and have faith in Yahweh Shah are the ones who are going to be saved and gathered up when Yahweh Shah returns, man. You see? Verse 12 says what? He shall set up an ensign for the nations and shall assemble the outcast of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. You hear it? It's only talking about gathering northern kingdom Israelites and southern kingdom Israelites who have faith in Yahweh Shah from wherever they are scattered to, man. That's who's going to be saved. You see, that main salvation is going to take place here in Babylon the Great, where the majority of the Israelites are. You see? Now let's go to Matthew 24, then we'll go back to Ezekiel 36. This is Matthew 24. We'll start at 30. It says what? Matthew 24 and 30 says what? This is the red letter our Lord Yahweh Shah is speaking. It says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. You see, because I, when, I, when, I, uh, when our Lord returns, man, he's coming back in a spectacular fashion, man. He's coming back on the gigantic chariot, which is a so-called UFO, with hundreds of thousands, you see, of chariots, uh, of chari uh, angels driving the chariots or coming with them, man. And what, it, and what is going to happen? Verse 31 says what? And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. From the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Do you hear that? Right here, Yahweh Shah is talking about fulfilling what we just read in Isaiah 11. What we're reading about in Ezekiel 36. You see? He is the one that's going to make this come to pass, man. Through the spirit and power of the heavenly father, Yahweh. So Ezekiel 36 says what? For I will take you from among the heathen. And gather you out of all countries and, I, and will bring you into your own land. That's going to be fulfilled through our Lord Yahweh Shah. You see? Now listen to this. Verse 25 says what? Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. And ye shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols when I, will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away your stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. This is talking about what, man? Us being bought up under the second covenant. 
which is only made possible through our Lord Yahweh Shah. This is the upgrade that's that's coming our way, man, if we continue to endure. You see? Verse 27 says what? And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and ye shall be my people and I will be your power. What is that talking about? The second covenant. You see? The transformation, man. The metamorphosis. This is what the will of the Heavenly Father is and it's all, this is all going to be fulfilled through our Lord Yahweh Shah, man. You see? Now let's get the precept of this and uh, we can get it in uh, Hebrews. Let's get it in Hebrews 8. Hebrews 8. And uh, let's start at 7. It says what? For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. That shows us that what? We're not going to be saved by the law. Because if that was the case, there would, have, there would have been no need for a second covenant. You see? We just read in Ezekiel 36 how the Most High is going to have to put the laws in us, man. That he's going to have to change us to make us perfect. All that's going to be fulfilled through the Lord Yahweh Shah. Verse 8 says what? For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. You hear that? The second covenant is not for all nations. The second covenant is only for the nation of Israel, man. The northern and the southern kingdom. You see, for the remnant first and foremost. Now, what does this second covenant go into? Let's read it. Verse 9 says what? Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, which only took place for the Israelites, showing you who the, who the covenant is for. Because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith Yahweh. This is, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. Now listen to this. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be my people. This is the same thing we read in Ezekiel 37. It was just the word, just worded a little bit different. But it's all alluding to the same thing. What? The remnant of Israel being upgraded into and be bought into perfection, man. And that's only going to happen through what? Through faith in the Lord Yahweh Shah. This ain't going to happen through the keeping of the laws to the letter. Because if that was the case, there would be no need for a second covenant. Verse eleven says what? And they shall not and they shall not teach every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. Ain't gonna be no need ain't gonna, ain't gonna be no more need to teach in the kingdom, man. Everybody gonna be in the same spirit. We're gonna be all on hey, the most I was about to put everybody on one accord, man. You see? Every the most I was about to uh, fully tie us back unto him in righteousness through Yahweh Shah, man. Ain't going to be no more need to teach. Ain't going to be no more to need, need to set up camp and go on the highways and byways, man. Ain't going to be no more need to tell our people to repent because it's going to be automatic. You see? They're going to be born with it in them. This is what Yahweh Shah is about to do for us, man, through the spirit and power of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. Verse 12 says what? For I will, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness. And their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. And how was that made possible? Through the blood of the Lord Yahweh Shah. You see? Verse 13 says what? And, and that he said the new covenant, he have made the first old, now that which decay and wax of old is ready to vanish. You see that? Because it, 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 the, the time is fastly approaching that what? We're going to be brought up under that second covenant. Lord willing, we continue to endure. Now, we read about the second covenant. Now, how is it going to be fulfilled, man? What has to happen? What has to happen is for us to be bought up, to, to be fully bought up into the second covenant, our bodies have to be changed. You see? We have to be upgraded from what we are now. We have to be taken away from this sinful flesh to be given that immortal, righteous body, man. You see? And this is all going to be done through who? Through the Lord Yahweh Shah. And this is why we continue to make the point, man. Yahweh Shah is very, very important for our nation, man. 
but uh, because for us to go to this next level that we're all longing to get to, it can only be done through faith in the Lord Yahweh Shah, man. We can't get there no other way. Because once again, if we could do it according to the law, Yahweh Shah would have had no reason to come and get up on the cross to give us forgiveness, of, uh, repentance, and forgiveness of sins, man. What is sin? Sin is transgressing the law. And why were we breaking the law? Because of the flesh, man. You see? And this is why we have to be upgraded. And that's exactly what's going to happen. You see? So all this can be fulfilled. And it all runs. We keep making the point. It all runs through who? Through the Lord, Yahweh Shah. You see? We can't have the second covenant without Yahweh Shah. You see? We can't have the law, statutes, and commandments put in us without Yahweh Shah. We can't be brought into a state of immortality into everlasting life without Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai even told us that out of his own mouth. You see? Because this is what we this this is what we're being prepared for. To receive the blessing of everlasting life, man. But that only comes through faith in Yahweh Shai. Let me see if I can find that real quick. I get I get two of these. This is John three and I'm gonna get John three sixteen too. Cause that, that hey, straight to the point, cut and dry. It lets you know what it is, man. This is John three sixteen. It says, "What for the most I so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Why to be a sacrifice for the nation of Israel, so we can be brought back unto the heavenly Father to save us from uh, from under the curse that we suffered by not being able to keep the law, man." The Most High loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son to die for us on the cross so we could be taken from under the curse of the law. So we, so we wouldn't have to be judged by the letter because the Most High knows he programmed us to go off in his flesh. And like the, like, like, the, like the brother James tells us, when you offend in one point of the law, you offend in all, man. So that makes you a sin about even offending in the smallest point of the law. But the Most High loved us so much that he gave us a high shot so we wouldn't have to be judged according to the letter, man. Now, let's listen to what the Most High has done for us, you see, by giving us Yahweh Shah. John 3.16 says what? For the Most High so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That was the way. Now, this is the way right here. That hey, if we believe in Yahweh Shah, we are not going to perish, but we're going to be what? We're going to enter into everlasting life. Meaning what? Being brought up under that second covenant on the first go round, man. Being taken from this weak, decrepit state that we're in now to enter into a state of immortality. And hey, we entering back into our godhood, man. That's only made possible through Yahweh Shah. John 3 36 says, What? He that believeth on the Son have everlasting life. You hear it? He that believeth on the Son have everlasting life. Meaning what? You believe upon Yahweh Shah. And if you keep that faith until the end, when he returns, he's going to beam us up into the chariot, give us the new bodies, put the law, statutes, and commandments in us. And guess what that fulfills? Him bringing us into everlasting life. That only runs through Yahweh Shah. We can only get it through faith in Yahweh Shah. It never said that anybody keeping the laws in perfection is going to enter into everlasting life. You know why it doesn't say that? It's because we can't keep the laws in perfection, man. It's not, it's, it's not even meant for us to do it right now. What we are meant to do is only is to have faith in Yahweh Shah. Now we keep the laws as best as we can, but we don't brag and boast about, yeah, I'm keeping this law, this and that and the other. No. We brag and boast of aid. And we say the water to the Heavenly Father for giving us the gift of believing in Yahweh Shah. Because that's how everlasting life is going to be obtained, man. Through faith in the Lord. So it says what? He that believeth on the Son of He that believeth on the Son have everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of the Most High abideth on him. You see that? All you dudes who are out here denying Yahweh Shah, that's what you have to look forward to. You see, death and destruction, man. Because did not Yahweh Shah tell us he's the way, the truth, and the life? Yahweh Shah is the life, man. And without him, you have no life. So you're going to have to put, be put to death on this side, 
be reborn into the kingdom of heaven, then you'll get it right. You see? I'm going to get five and we'll move on. John 5 and 24 says what? Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me have everlasting life. You see that? And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And this is what the Most High has done for us through Yahweh Shah, man. The Most High has given us access unto everlasting life through faith in his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah. That's how we're going to obtain the upgrade. This is how we're going to come into that second covenant, man. That's what it's all. That's what it's talking about. Us being a hey, through faith in Yahweh Shah, we're going to be brought up under that second covenant, man. Which is what, which leads to what everlasting life. Because if we never sin again, you see, we'll never die again. Because what's the wages of sin? The wages of sin is death. So being brought up under the second covenant. Never going off having the law, such as the commandments in us, and we walking in it in perfection, that leads to everlasting life. That's what Yahweh Shah is going to bring us into, man. You see? So we read about the second covenant. So now what has to happen? We have to be changed, right? You see, we have to be changed. This is what the faith in Yahweh Shah is going to bring us into. That's what all the, the faith leads to, man. So we're going to start at uh, 50. Oh, man. 46. We'll start at 50. Con. First Corinthians uh, 15 and 50 says what? Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So this is a whole process, man. See, this flesh that we're in now, it can't go into the Most High's kingdom, man. Because if we went into the kingdom in this flesh, it will only be a matter of time before we're back in captivity, man. And we know, according to Lamentations 4, that this is the last captivity that we will ever suffer. This is why we have to be changed. If we're not changed, we're going right back into captivity, man. You see? But the most I promised that he was going to upgrade us and he was going to make us like Yahweh Shai is. And that's what's going to take place, man. We're going to live forever. We have to put on that, what? Incorrupt body, man. It's a must that we do so. 1 Corinthians 15 and 50. This, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Most High, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. Meaning what? Not every man of the Lord that's walking the earth right now is going to die. Now, some brothers are going to have to perish from the flesh. Because that's all it is. A transition from the from the, uh, the from the flesh to everlasting life. To fulfill what? To fulfill the Most High's will, man. To fulfill prophecy. But not every single brother is going to taste of that. But it goes on to say, but we shall all be changed. See, 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 not all brothers are going to die, but we're all going to be changed, man. We're all going to be, what, given those new bodies. Verse 52 says what? In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. This is what is happening right now. This is what we're being prepared for. To receive of that change through faith. In Yahweh Shah. Through our belief, trust, hope. In Yahweh Shah, we're going to enter into that change, man. Verse 53 says, well, for this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. You hear that? Immortality is everlasting life, man. Never dying again. It's a must that we be changed. And I'm going to keep making the point. And how is the change going to be made possible? Is it going to be made possible through the keeping of the laws to perfection? No, because if that was the case, we wouldn't have to. We, we, we would have no need to be changed. You see. We're going to put on immortality. Once again, through faith in who? The Lord, Yahweh Shah. You see. Now, verse 54 says what? So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, 
and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. You see that? Why? Because the wages of sin is what? The wages of sin is death. When you're sinning and breaking the laws of the Most High, it's going to eventually lead to you receiving a judgment, man. In some shape, form, or fashion. It leads to death. So it says what? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. And this is why we need to be upgraded. This is why we need to be changed. This is why we need to be brought into that second covenant. Because we can't keep the laws in perfection in this flesh that we're in now. So we have to be upgraded into something greater, man. You see? So that curse of not being able to keep the law won't be hanging over us forever. See, in the kingdom of heaven, we're going we gonna, to we gonna walk in the laws in perfection, man. Like the most I told you in Ezekiel 26, I mean, Ezekiel 36. And he says it all throughout the scriptures, man, that we're going to walk in his ways and he's going to be our God and we're going to be his people. That's always alluding to what? The most I bringing us up under, up under that second covenant and making us perfect. You see? So it goes on to say, verse 30, uh, 57. But thanks be to the most I which giveth us the victory through our Lord, Yahweh Shammashiach. There it is. How are we going to be brought into this state of perfection, man? How are we going to be brought into this state of uh, everlasting life and immortality? It's through the Lord Yahweh Shah, man. Never mentions any uh, us accomplishing this by keeping the laws to the letter, man. And all these dudes who are here bragging and boasting that, they full of shit. The only way we can enter into everlasting life and receive the victory is through the Lord Yahweh Shah. Point blank, period. Now, verse 58 says what? Therefore, my beloved brethren... Be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So we're not doing these videos for no reason, man. You see, whoever whoever these words need the uh, spirit that needs to hit is going to hit it. They're going to believe and they're going to be what? It's a seal with the Holy Spirit of truth, man. And, and, and fight unto the end to receive salvation. And us men who are doing this work, man, we're going to receive a reward in the kingdom. So we're not doing this for nothing, man. You see, and we have to keep on doing it. So I want to get this one. Let's get a... Uh... That's 1 John, if I ain't mistaken. Yep. We're going to start at 1 John 3 and 1. It says what? Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of the Most High. And how are we sons of the Most High, man? Through faith in Yahweh Shah. You see? Through faith in Yahweh Shah and by doing what Yahweh Shah told us to do. Because everything Yahweh Shah told us to do is what? It's according to the will of the Most High. So through obedience, you see, by way of our faith in Yahweh Shah, we're, made, we're called the sons of the Most High, man. It says, well, therefore the world knoweth us not. Because it knew him not. And this is why we're outcast, outcast in the world, man. Because the spirit we walk in is a spirit that's completely opposed to this world. These people don't know the most high. So they don't know us, man. That's why they hate us the way they hate us, man. Because it's actually, it's, it's not them hating us. It's, it's, it's them hating the spirit that's upon us, man. Which is the spirit of our heavenly father, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah. You see? Verse 2 says what? Beloved, now are we the sons of the Most High, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So when Yahweh Shah returns, that's what we're going to be bought into, man, because you have to understand. Yahweh Shah is the first Israelite to be brought up under that second covenant, man. You see, he's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the first one to receive to be back to be put back in his glory as what? As uh, immortal, man. Back in a completely righteous state. And this is what we're fighting to enter into. And when he returns, we're gonna be just like he is, man. 
To fulfill what? To fulfill the will of the Heavenly Father, man. This is what the Most High's... Uh, This is this is how about Shmi is expected in for the Israelites, man. For us to be changed, be brought back into our godhood. And Yahweh is gonna see that it comes to pass, man. Why? It's because it's the will of the Heavenly Father. That's what it's all about, man. Everything on this earth is playing out according to the Most High's will. Ain't nothing happening outside of that, man. Everything that's taking place, the most high ordained it to happen. And when it's all said and done, the Lord Yahweh is going to come and gather us from wherever we are. You see, take us up into the chariots and, and, and transform us into completely righteous beings, man. Completely righteous and immortal beings, man. Why is that? It's because it's the Heavenly Father's will for him to do so. Now, verse 3 goes on to say, And every man that have this hope in him, purify of himself even as he is pure you see that because what we're actually hoping for the will of the most high to come to pass we're praying for it man we're longing for it. we're hastening the day of yahweh shah is coming this is what makes us pure because it causes us to separate from this wicked ass world man it causes us to have faith and hope in the lord yahweh shah which is what the key to our salvation and we're pure because we're in this mind state man we're pure because of the blood of Yahweh Shah. The blood of the Lamb makes us pure. And Lord willing, we continue to endure. Now, I'll wrap it up in this Philippians, man. Let's see if I can find it. Where you at? Yes. Philippians 3 and 20 says what? For our conversation is in heaven. And that goes into what? Our citizenship. Let's get it. Let's get into that word. Uh. Matter of fact, let's get in the NLT, then we get it in the we get it in the uh, in the linear. Philippians three and twenty it says what? But we are citizens of heaven, where the Lord Yahweh Shammashiach lives, and we are eagerly waiting for Him to return as our Savior. And this is what the remnant is doing, man. This is what the remnant is longing for. You see. This is where our hope lies. The remnant doesn't have a 10-year plan. The remnant is hoping that they, the, the kingdom is established this year. If it be the most high's will. You see? Because we're looking for what? We're, we're, look, we're looking and hoping in what? The will, a hey, the most high's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. That's why we're citizens of heaven. Because we want the most high to bring that order. You see? In that way of being down to the earth, man. You see, that's what we're hoping in. And the Lord Yahweh is going to bring it. Now, verse 21 says what? Who shall change our vile body. You hear that? That it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. You hear that? He's going to complete our transformation of being what? Being brought up under that second covenant, man. And we're going to receive a body like, like Yahweh Shah has. To keep the laws in perfection, man. As if we're breathing or blinking. That's how we're going to be keeping the laws in the kingdom, man. Perfectly. Ain't nobody going to have to remind us what we need to be doing on the Sabbath server. How we need to be keeping the path. It's going to be in us, man. The Most High is going to download it into our spirits. But we can only get to that point by what? Through a hey, by our faith in Yahweh Shah, man. As we read, we have everlasting life through our belief in the only begotten Son of the Most High, man. We don't have it no other way. So Philippians three and twenty one, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body? According to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. And that power was given unto him by who? The heavenly father Yahweh. Yahweh shall told us what? That all things and all power in heaven and earth has been given unto him, man. You see? So, yeah. Everything the most High has promised is going to keep coming out, man. Because that's the time we're living in. And continue to go into these things. Everything the Most High has promised unto us, man, 
it's all going to be brought to pass through our Lord Yahweh Shah. So us being saved from the land of our enemies, taken out of captivity, taken back into our land, being put up under that second covenant, having our bodies changed, being cleansed, you know, that's only made possible through our, our, our Lord and our Savior, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, man. And don't let nobody tell you otherwise. There is no salvation coming to those who, 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 who believe they're keeping the law of perfection, man. Salvation is only coming to those who believe in Yahweh Shah, point blank, period. You see? Because he he is the one the most or has ordained to fulfill these prophecies on his behalf. You see, so with that, man, I'm gonna give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rakakwadash. A double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, and a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful let I am out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah has created us to do. With that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, Abba, Abba, Abba.